Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. As always, I am your host, Michael Pacheco, and today with me I have Todd Sullivan. Uh, Todd is a Christian husband, dad, athlete, coach, and retired naval officer. He's called to make people and organizations better. He does that by working with people as individuals first. Uh, this is Todd's second round on the podcast. Uh, if you like this podcast, definitely head back and check out his uh, his first one too. Um, we'll link to uh, you know we'll we'll link both of the episodes together on the show notes page on Boxer Agency. Um, Todd, brother, welcome to the Remarkable Coach again. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. I truly uh, am honored and humbled to you know have this opportunity to. to to have a great conversation with an old friend again. Yeah, buddy, we were just we were just talking about that, and uh, Todd and I were chatting before uh, before I had the opportunity to hit record, and it was it was turning into it had turned into it had become good conversation, and uh, and I had to stop Todd mid sentence so that I could hit record before we wasted any of the good vibes. <laughs> um. But yeah, so so Todd, I, I want to let's let's re, let's start out. Let's start this out by kind of refreshing our listeners who may have heard your first episode, or you know, just letting uh, new listeners know a little bit about you. I want you to if, just talk about. Let us know a little bit about yourself in your own words and mm-hmm. what it is you do and why you do it. Yeah, so um, uh, you know, I am a Christian first, uh, a husband, a dad. I'm a pop. I have two grandkids um, that keep me young. Uh, I try to be an athlete, um, and I love being a coach. Um, I spent 30 years in the Navy, so I was really uh, blessed with the opportunity to serve our nation um, and really get what I I jokingly call my PhD in leadership because I just work for some tremendous people, a couple not so tremendous people, but mostly tremendous people, um, and just learned so much and uh, really grew the desire to really help people become better. And, you know, my best days really truly are helping other people get to their best days. Nice. I love it. Um, Todd, you were just telling me that you are working on a book. I am. Do you want to tell us a little bit, a little bit more about that? Yeah. So um, I'm writing a book on leadership and, and I was telling, you know, like I was telling you, Michael, I don't have the cool factor. I wasn't a Navy SEAL. Uh, and I don't have the authority factor. I am not a retired admiral, um, although my mom seems to think maybe I should have been. Um, but I think I'm relatable. I joined at the uh, lowest enlisted rank. I climbed the, the enlisted rank to senior enlisted and then started over again as a commissioned officer and retired out of command. And there's just so many stories and opportunities to tell people, leadership lessons that I learned along the way. Uh, I slow rolled myself on getting this book out because it just felt very self-promoting that I was just going to tell a bunch of my stories. Mm -hmm. And then um, I just realized that I didn't learn leadership on my own. I learned leadership from some some great people. I was going to say some great Americans, but I worked for a couple of Canadians that were pretty awesome too. And uh, Americans. Yeah. You know, uh, so I'll tell you about them. uh, And, uh, but I want to bring their stories into this book and I want to highlight all of the, the, the things that I learned from them, you know, in these different categories of, of what I consider just uh, absolute necessities in leadership. And so I am reaching out to people and saying, hey, would you mind sharing your story with me on, you know, you know, building, you know, a great team or on mentoring um, junior people or on, you know, leaving a legacy and building your relief. And all of a sudden it became really exciting to get my stories married up with some of theirs. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm, I'm, you know, really invigorated. And uh, as I was telling you, I have a a good friend. She's an author. She's a coach. And um, she told me one that she hates 80% of people's first past their title. Uh, I won't share what my title is because I haven't secured the URL yet, but she was so excited about my title. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm in the top 20%. 
And she said, okay, let's start talking deadlines. And then it got real. And so, you know, we're looking at by the end of 2023, having this book in print. What, what kind of head, what, what do you mean talking about headlines? Like, like press or? No, just like about getting, you know, she just really started, you know, oh, I love the idea of this title. I love the idea of, of how you're going to approach this. Okay. And I don't want to get ahead of myself in uh -huh. getting the title out there. Uh -huh. But uh, I truly believe that leadership is relational and it's all about how we take care of people, how we serve people, uh -huh. not about the benefits of, uh, you know, I told my, my sailors when I was in uniform, leadership's about the burden of rank, not the benefit of rank. Mm -hmm. It's about the more yeah. senior you become, you now have a lot more people that you're responsible for and to, mm -hmm. as opposed to, uh, I like to thank all the little people who have helped me, you know, get to where I am today. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I'd like to thank the little people I stepped on to get into this prestigious office that I hold today. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not, that's not the way that, that leadership works in my experience at all. No. Interesting. Okay, cool. I like it, man. That's awesome. Um, I love the, I love the shift in frame that you're talking about there where you were, you know, you, you felt like maybe you wanted to write a book or maybe you should write a book and it just, there was no inspiration there in, in writing a book about yourself and your stories and, and your advice. And then it sounds like, you know, you were talking to your, your, your pal who is the author and also a coach and maybe she gave you some guidance and then you're like this idea to go around and, and talk to others and get their stories and almost make like, you know, you're almost kind of like making like a compilation of leadership yeah. stories. Right. And, and then that kind of is what really drove it home for you. It is. And, and I just thought, man, I've learned so much from these people, these leaders that and none of them have a book out. And I thought they deserve to have their stories told. Huh. They deserve for people to see the impact that they've had on countless people. I mean, if you think about an admiral or a general, I mean, you know, you're talking 30 plus years of service. You're talking very senior. So they're leading leaders. They are leading um you know, people that are admirals and generals now, even though they've been retired for years, uh, when you think of a, a Navy SEAL and the ability to create cohesive teams that know what one another are doing, mm -hmm. that's that's some magic happening on an everyday level. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. Very, very cool. Um, awesome, man. What, what, what else is, what else is new in your life? I think the last time we talked, so like I said, I've, I've, I mentioned to you off the air before that I've got a one-year-old daughter now and I know, so it's, it's been at least, it's been more than a year. Is yeah. It, it's, been, you know, it's, it's been maybe a year and a half or so. Yeah. And, and, you know, I've, I look back and I didn't look at the date of when we talked and I yeah. thought, I thought, you know what? That was one of my first cup, you know, like first wasn't my first, but I think it was my second podcast that I had done. I thought, uh -huh. man, hopefully I can be so much better this time. <laughs> What's um, uh, go ahead? I was gonna say you may remember, and we talked about the word serving and service earlier. The very uh -huh. first podcast I was on, when I got done, the guy titled it Built to Serve. Uh-huh. And every time I think of that podcast, I think of what a compliment he gave me yeah. by saying I'm built to serve. And uh, you know, I, I I think a lot of people don't look at it that way, but we should. Like we should look at the opportunity to serve and help make others better. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. And you know, you know a thing or two about that having having a military background. Yeah. I love it. I love it. What's um so yeah, what's so in the past year and a half, 
tell me about, you know, tell me, tell me a little bit about your journey. Cause I remember when we were talking before, you know, I mean, what's, what's, what's new since I was then? Pretty, I was pretty new at coaching then. I think, yeah. Um, I was really trying to develop my niche. Um, <laughs> and it's interesting. So I was doing a lot of solopreneur or very close to solopreneur coaching. And I still have a couple of those clients. Um, but what I really, I find like intrinsically rewarding to me is finding that person that, you know, has been promoted into a management role. Hmm. That's really good at, you know, you pick a skill. It can be at accounting, at, um, you know, IT, but now they're the manager. Mm-hmm. And they're the manager because they were a great technician mm-hmm. and they've received, received exactly zero training or coaching in how to lead teams. Mm-hmm. And I love working with those people mm-hmm. because they have such an impact on an organization. And I don't think, I don't think we put enough credence into the impact that they have on retention on performance of teams on the bottom line Mm -hmm. um on who shows up for work and who doesn't you know and so they're they deserve to be developed and Mm -hmm. coached they deserve to become good at this new skill set that they haven't developed Sure. And that's where I find myself just really gravitating towards. Um, Cause it that. reminds me of my, you know, a lot of my time in the service, you know, where you're always trying to develop your relief. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you want to be able to, if you're in a, a leadership role and you want to be able to take two weeks off, somebody has to fill in. Otherwise your life sucks when you get back. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you have to develop those people and you do it by, you know, some training, some um, delegation, some empowering decision-making. But I I think there's just so much opportunity to retain good people in management roles if we we equip them. And I think that's where coaching comes in. That's great, man. That's, I think that's, that's a legitimate need um, in, in the business world, especially in the corporate world. Um, I, I spent a few years working at, at bigger companies, Intel, McAfee, Network Associates. Um, and are you familiar with the Peter Principle? Yes. So it, it sounds like that's your that's your target. That's kind of your target right there, right? It is. Yeah. yeah. So for those for those listening or, or watching on YouTube, the, the Peter Principle says that people will get promoted up to their level of incompetence. So if you're really good at what you're doing, you'll get a promotion. And if you're really good at that, you'll get another promotion. And if you're really good at that, you'll get another promotion. And eventually you're going to get to a point, you're going to get to a level where for whatever reason, maybe it's a lack of training, you're not that good at what you do, but you got promoted because you were really good at the thing before. And that's, uh, it's a pretty common thing. Yeah. And I think we see now people get promoted And they weren't really interested in that promotion and they don't get equipped or coached or trained or a combination of those things. And they leave. Interesting. And they leave because they really were good at something. And then they get thrown into something that they're not so good at and that their stock starts going down Uh and they don't look as good to those, those former peers yeah. And they go back to doing something they're good at, where if we work with them, you know, and we pull out the best and what they appreciated about their former leader, sure. we can we can help them develop into a leader that is significantly better than a technician. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's a skill set. You know, we we send people to school for, you know engineering and we send people to school for nursing yeah. but we don't send them to school for engineering supervisor or head nurse mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we just hope they pick it up because they're good at charting 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's that's a perfectly that's that's totally valid, right? I mean, you get it's not that an engineer cannot be, you know, upper management or middle management for that matter. It's that it's a completely different skill set. And if you get that promotion, you know, you, you like you said I can I can I can imagine a situation where someone gets a promotion like that, right? And they're they're essentially, you know, tossed into this into this new ocean with choppy waters, right? And they and they they're flailing around and they don't know what they're doing because they haven't had any training. It's not what they do. They're an engineer or they're a technician or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Um, and and it's not that they couldn't do it, but they they I, I've definitely seen. In, in first-hand experience of, of, of times where a company will promote someone, again, it's a, the Peter principle at work because they're good at something and they get to this leadership position and they just don't know, they have no clue what they're doing because they've never done it before. Yeah. And that's sad because that's a way to take somebody who's been dedicated to your organization mm -hmm. and has been a top performer mm -hmm. and crush their spirits alienate them or isolate them or make them think I just need to get through this day. I just need uh -huh. to get through this week. I just need to get through this quarter, but you never get the best out of somebody who just wants to get through pickup time domain. For sure. Yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Who are your, so you mentioned you were working a lot with solopreneurs before who are your, who are your main clients these days? So I'm in talks with a major manufacturer. Uh, hopefully it comes through just to do two different types of coaching. One is some one-on-one -on -one with managers who are really good technicians and haven't led their teams well. Mm -hmm. And one is to come in and deliver some group coaching to mm -hmm. like frontline supervisors and, you know, to work on how to create a good climate, how to develop cohesion, how to provide purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's an actual cert, you know, a lot of people don't realize this. There's an actual certification on through a company called Resilience Building Leadership Professional. And I'm one of the, I'm a certified trainer. Um, I consider myself a coach for them because uh, the trainer has all the answers. A coach facilitates really good discussions. And uh -huh. I would like to think that I facilitate good discussions instead of just deliver, you know, information. Sure. But it's a really good outline, especially <laughs> for that frontline supervisor who went from being, you know, wrench turner to you have 10 wrench turners, <laughs> have them turn the wrenches like you did. No. And so I think that's a really good tool to put in place in, in a big organization or a small, I think big organizations benefit from it really well because um, you can do that group coaching and so not only do you have a coach facilitating the discussion, but you get some of that peer coaching going on. Uh -huh. And that's where, and, and those are the people that they're going to be, you know, left working with when I'm gone. Uh -huh. And so when you that's can right. start to develop those relationships with your <laughs> peers and say, Hey, I just tried this and it didn't work. Oh, well I did this and it worked really well for my team. Now you've left the ability for each other to help continually build each other. Yeah. Um, and then when they get promoted, you know, call me again and uh, I'll help, you know, coach them into their next role. But I think there's, I think there's benefits in both. Um, I was, I've been talking to a, a parts manufacturer, um, a, a plant manager, and we were talking over coffee and he's like, I think I need you to come to my organization. He's like, I'm really good here and I'm, and I'm really good here. Mm -hmm. Like, well, those two hands are pretty far apart. He's like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know, we've set up for me to come in and talk to him and, and to walk through his, his plant. And, you know, I, I love doing that. Um, kind of takes me back to, you know, I, I kind of like that industrial. Um, but I've also been talking with a, a small professional services firm that, yeah. Um, their, their partners are aging out mm -hmm. and they need the next round of partners. Uh -huh. And I've you know, worked HR in a professional services company. It's where I first learned about coaching. Huh. Um, I don't remember if I told you that story, but I was holding a, a conversation with a, a senior partner 
And the guy that sat in the office next to me was the director of learning and development. And we talked a little bit and he's like, well, you were having a $1,500 conversation. And I kind of looked at him. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, I mean, we're not paying you that. I'm like, he's like, you were coaching him. I was like, well, yeah. I mean, that's what we do. We coach other people to help make them better. Mm -hmm. He said, no, there's a vocation for that. And I admit, like, I was completely, I was like, people do that for a living? And he <laughs> laughed at me. And he's like, oh, you sheltered military people. The next day he handed me a book, Coaching for Performance by Sir John Whitmore. Huh. I was like, wow, like people do this. Uh -huh. And, you know, uh, a year or so later, I, I, I ran a, a startup after that. Um, but as soon as I I knew that I, I needed to to make another shift, I started looking into ICF coaching programs. Yeah. And interestingly enough, I called one and they said, well, we're, we're starting a class. And I said, well, when? And they said, well, <laughs> 9 a.m. your time. <clears throat> I said, well, how far behind am I? They said, you can catch up. And I was online like 37 minutes later uh -huh. <laughs> in my first coaching class. Like, okay. Like I had nothing. I had done no pre-reading. I'm yeah. trying to, you know, there's, they're mailing me, you know, my packet. <laughs> I'm trying to print out the notes as I went. Yeah. And that's how I jumped into coaching. <laughs> I and it. I absolutely um, wish I would have found this right as I was retiring from the military or before. Yeah. yeah. I love it. That's, <laughs> that's funny. Um, what is, so what is it, what does a typical engagement with you look like now? Do you, do you work with people for like, you know, a three month, six month period or yeah, is it? I, I ask them to commit to me for at least three months or mm -hmm. six sessions. Um, because I think for you to really feel the change, it yeah. takes, you know, six, six engagements for you to have, mm -hmm have made some change for you to have seen it in place. Um, but, you know, I, I've had some people I've worked with for a year and a half because mm -hmm. they've seen the benefit of the growth. Mm -hmm. And and so once we're past that initial um, three months, I'm like, you just like, please tell me if you're, you know, it, when we're done, mm -hmm. let's talk about it. Let's figure out how this is, you know, how you sustain growth because I don't want them to stop growing because we stop working. Um, and I've had some people are like, you know what, can I just keep you on retainer? Like, can I use you as a phone, a friend or, um, you know, and it's kind of funny because I actually, you know, a friend fee? <laughs> you know, and, and, and that was a question I got asked and I was like, well, I, I think it's going to be situational. Uh -huh. I'm like, okay. And so I get a phone call like two months later yeah. and they said, Hey, I have, you know, $300 to spend. Tell me when it's up. <laughs> I'm like, perfect. Let's, you know, and, and, and I happened to be at home when yeah. I saw him. I was like, interesting. You know, I was sitting in my bonus room in a comfortable chair. You know, I keep a notepad in there. Um, I didn't have their notepad. So at some point I walked down, you know, found their notepad that I kept from all of our, our but we had a, a 60 to 70 minute phone call that work through a transition that they were going through in their role. Huh. And, uh, you know, I asked a question at the 50 minute point and there was a, no kidding, a 30 to 40 second pause. And all of a sudden I heard, that is it. That is it. Mm-hmm. And we wrapped up like 10 minutes later, nice. um, you know, and, and, and I got off that phone and I walked downstairs and I felt like 15 pounds lighter. I felt so energized. And my wife said, I love when you have these good conversations Uh huh. because like, you are on cloud nine. I was like, yeah. You know, I said, <laughs> without going into any details, I just, you know, help somebody work through a huge problem uh -huh. and it's going to be a big adjustment for them and their team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good hour. Yeah. Yeah. You get to sleep well that night. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, and, and so that those conversations, whether it's a phone call, whether it's a Zoom, or as I like to call my knee-to-knee conversations in a coffee shop or something like that, uh-huh. those are the things that you can, and I love, I typically love a video or, or you know, in person because I can see mm-hmm. change being made. Sure, sure. That 30-second pause, I knew like when it went past 10 or 15 seconds, I was like, this, yeah, this is what this, you know, there was a lot of stuff we had to get through to get to that question. Uh-huh. Um, if I would have asked that question 20 minutes earlier, it wouldn't have worked. Sure. But, sure, sure, sure. but it just such a great feeling. Yeah. And so, um, you gotta, you gotta grease, grease the gears before they move, before they move. Yeah. So that's a long way of saying, I like to work with you for a minimum of three months or as long as you need to work with me. I love it. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I think that's, um, that's pretty common. That's a pretty common time frame for a lot of coaches that I speak with. Um, and frankly, that's a pretty common time frame, even for, for, for us as a marketing agency and for my other marketing agency colleagues, um, because it, you need you need a minimum time to 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 have the opportunity to to build not even build momentum to just at least get some traction right you yeah. got you got to have an opportunity to get traction yeah you don't see return on investment overnight right you know uh, unless you were one of the very first people in bitcoin um but even even so now that doesn't look so so sexy so that wasn't uh, even yeah and that wasn't overnight either cuz bitcoin yeah. there, for a long time and it wasn't worth anything for a long time yeah so uh, yeah you know like all those overnight success stories that nobody saw the sweat equity going into right yeah yeah absolutely absolutely and the same thing applies in 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 change like yeah yeah i'm just uh <clears throat> reading a book right now called brands and bs by Bernard Schroeder is the guy's name. Write it down. I like that title. Dude, it's a great, it's a fantastic book. This guy uh, and his agency are responsible for um, uh, Amazon product reviews, um, a number of different things on Amazon. So they started working with Bezos in 1995. I didn't even realize that Amazon was existed in 1995 that's that when were, they were probably still a bookseller did i yeah i don't i was 15 i don't remember <laughs> i never bought anything online at that time i mean maybe i think ebay ebay was a, i remember ebay but yeah at, at any rate um <laughs> you know and and amazon now it's like it's so ubiquitous and there's so many you know, there's all this rhetoric uh, in certain circles online about hating on billionaires and Bezos is terrible and Elon Musk is terrible. And these are these are these are entrepreneurs who worked their butts off for years Absolutely. and years. and are employing thousands or tens or hundreds of thousands of people. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but it was yeah. I was as I was reading through that. It, he mentioned that he was he they started working with amazon with bezos on the the amazon brand in 1995 and and to to this day like they came up with the idea of product reviews and the reason why is because the amazon brand and if you think about this with the way that you interact with amazon there's a couple things number one the single click buy was theirs in 1995 they did that the uh, the login and saving of your credit card information was theirs. They did that in 1995. And then the product reviews. And their, the Amazon brand was modeled after a boutique hotel concierge. And that was the idea because nothing online for purchasing online at the time was, was built around that. Yeah. And they couldn't compete with Borders and they couldn't compete with Barnes & Noble because there was no physical Amazon at the time. Yep. So they, they're, they're like, how can we create something entirely new for this bookstore that is not Borders? Anyways, yeah. I, I'm, I'm digressing here, but it was, it was, it was a, it's a fascinating conversation to think about that. 
But in that, I mean, that speaks so much. So I actually like I'm a I'm a reader. Um yeah. between listening and reading three, maybe four books a month is my uh-huh. typical. Uh-huh. And you know, Amazon gets a ton of my business. Sure. And I wanted to buy a book as a gift not too long ago without knowing what I wanted to buy. And I was like, oh, I do have a Barnes and Nobles in town. Uh-huh. I bet I hadn't walked through the door of that building in a year and a half. Uh-huh. But I walked in and I lost myself for two hours. Uh-huh. <laughs> like I was behind when I left there. Like my calendar, I was like, oh, crap. But <laughs> It was a great, like, I loved it. And I've actually calendared for me to go back in there in April. Yeah. And yeah. we have a new used bookstore in town. I've calendared for me to go in there next month because if I don't, I won't do it. Um, other than I was driving by thinking, I need a gift and there's an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. So I can't, I like, th- this book's going on my list. I and I it. kind of would feel wrong to buy it from anywhere but Amazon. I know, I know, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 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 a good one. It's a good one, and the the he's he's a good writer, and clearly, you know, he's he's he was at the top of his game in the '90s. He's worked with he's worked with Apple, with Amazon, um, just gigantic, enormous names. Um, yeah, but I digress. So for you now too, like, how are you? Um, how are you? How are you getting clients these days? How are you marketing yourself these days? Not well. Um, I'm glad we're talking. Yes. You know, it's so funny. Uh, like, I know that I need to improve outreach. Mm-hmm. Um, it took me a long time to get comfortable even saying I'm going to do that because huh? kind of back to the idea of the book, it just seems so self-promoting where I'm just talking about what I help people do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I realized like I was in a, a small business say where I've coached the owner of that. It's a franchise, but I've coached the local franchise and that place was on point. Mm-hmm. And I, thought, I had something to do with that. Like mm-hmm. I helped that business owner create and lead a team better. Right. And there's some, you know, they're doing better financially. Um, because of good coaching and um, very first client um, that I ever had uh, because I was in there talking to another friend saying I was becoming a leadership coach. And the owner said, I want to hire you. What do I do? And I thought, well, this is going to be easy. Like, right. Like every place I go talk about coaching, (laughs) well, when can we start? (laughs) That has not replicated itself too many times. Um, I, I don't get it, but hope, it, hope is it, not a strategy, Todd. Hope nope, is not a strategy. <laughs> no. Nope. So um, one of the things that I do is I do try to provide, you know, good talking points, short, short pieces on LinkedIn. And, yeah. um, and I, I love engagements. I love when I get somebody to message me and say, Hey, I loved reading that. And, and I'll say, let's jump on a call and talk about it. Let's talk about that topic. Yeah. Um, I've gotten one client that way um, from saying, hey, I am trying to get promoted. Um, and I think for me to get promoted, I need to be more comfortable in leading a team by being a member of, you know, and not having any direct reports. And so that's been very rewarding working with somebody who said, I need to level up. Mm-hmm. And you know, that they're a person who is not from the South. And so their, their approach, their demeanor is very different than a lot of people, you know, in middle Tennessee. And we've, we've really worked to, to make that person not only feel like a leader, but in a leadership role, acting as a leader, being a leader, creating a team, creating other leaders, people who have promoted off of that person's team on into leadership roles. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think that's when you know that you're a leader is when you're developing other leaders. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to ask you a question, Todd. Can I, can I help, uh, can I try 
to maybe help you reframe the way that you think about outreach? Absolutely. So you you mentioned with pride and, and a glowing smile on your face um, how you felt when you walked into your, your client's franchise and how they had improved because you had helped them lead a better team. If you don't do outreach, if you don't market yourself well, you're denying opportunities to other businesses to benefit from your guidance, from your coaching. And so I would argue that it is your ethical obligation as, 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 as someone who serves to market yourself better, to do outreach, to, to, to make a point of doing that, not to avoid it because if it's you believe in what you do, I can see it in your face and the way that you talk about it. <laughs> yeah. And and you can help more people. So don't deny that opportunity to other businesses. Yeah. And I and I do. And and I do feel like everybody I work with that I am serving them. And because if I'm not, then I shouldn't be taking anything ex in exchange for our interactions. Sure. Um, you know, and that's you know, another ethical piece. Like if, yeah. uh, you know, I had to fire a client not too long ago um, and I used this qu the quote with them. If you show me a person who doesn't value your time, I'll show you a person who doesn't respect you. Mm -hmm. My client completely agreed. And I said, you're that person. <laughs> and I said, but here's, here's the deal. Like we're, you know, we're beyond three months. We were halfway through a month and I said, I don't think that we should like, I don't think that we are, our relationship is not getting where we should be. Mm -hmm. I said, so do you want me to return half a month or the whole month? You tell me whatever you say, you'll have it shortly. Sure. Because I am serving them by, but I also don't ever want a person to think, that I didn't provide more value to them than they expected. Right. And so I was ceasing the coaching relationship and it wasn't just, you know, the, the, the time respect, there are some other things that were starting to be pretty evident, but I'd much rather give you some money back mm -hmm. and have you feel good about our interactions than to take your money and have you feel bad about it. Mm hmm yeah. No, I, I respect that. I respect that. Um, I think that's, I mean, we've honestly, we've, I would do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, by posing it and, and allowing them to say, no, this is what I think. Yeah. Slip really well. True. Um, and I told him like, if life changes and you change um, your outlook, on how you want to approach this, let's let's talk again potentially and see, mm -hmm. or let me tell you who I think would align really well with you. Oh, there you go. Yeah, always. Yeah, and and then you're still serving, right? Because you're giving yeah. them a referral to someone who you think can help more yeah. than you. Can. And, and I'd rather help you find the right coach than me be the wrong coach for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. No, that's great. We do that all the time. We we've got we, at Boxer, we've got referral partners. So a lot of time, for example, digital advertising, it's just not something that we do. It's not in our wheelhouse. So we don't offer those services, but I've got, you know, two or three uh, other agencies um, where I'm friends with the people that own it and I trust them and I have seen their results and I know they do a great job. Yeah. And I would not do that. Feel good about it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I feel, good, you about feel it. good about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, that's serving that's uh, leading with integrity um, that is putting their interest before your wallet. Yeah. And that's what we should all be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Um, I want to be respectful. I want to be respectful of your time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that's not why I told that story. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> um, Todd, this has been great, man. Is there anything that you want to chat about that we haven't had an opportunity to touch upon yet? I don't think so. Um, I truly, again, I, I love uh, the opportunity 
to to do this. Uh, I'm always, you know, very humbled by somebody saying, I want to, I want to, you know, broadcast our conversation. We haven't had um, enough. Come back for more. <laughs> so um, and, and honestly, I truly appreciate the fact that you take the time to do this. Um, I imagine it's a lot more work than most people think it is. So I, you know, especially with a one-year-old, like you've kept a mate, you've maintained a quiet office. Um, so like, don't, that's work, brother. Like, don't speak that into existence, Todd. Be careful. Be careful the things that you say out loud. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and uh, I want to, you know, honestly, thank you for the service that you provide, you know, to, to coaches. Yeah, absolutely. No, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you making the time. Um, you know, this uh, transparently, you know, I, I don't, I don't try to hide this, this serves, this serves us as well. Um, and the idea for this entire podcast and Kevin's podcast, right? You've been on that yeah. one three times conversations with coaches. Um, you know, it, it is, it is supposed to be a win, 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 right? Us at Boxer, we get authority and build trust in the coaching category as a marketing agency. You get a chance to talk about your message and build trust and authority with what you're doing and the listeners and the viewers on YouTube get a chance to learn cool stuff, all right? And, and yeah. to, to learn different strategies and different tactics and, and so on and so forth. So, um, it's, it's. It's our pleasure, honestly, and I appreciate you know every coach that we've had an interview, one interview with. I appreciate them taking the time. The coaches that have done you, this is your fifth interview with Boxer on a podcast. So thank you for that. Yeah, eventually I'm going to ask you guys for a T-shirt or something. There you go. Yeah, I know, right? You know, for marketing purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we've got we've got hats. We've got we've got hats. Yeah. Um, I think it's a it's a picture of our, our little boxer dog logo and then it says make that dollar holla. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. No, and uh you know, you and Kevin are such great conversationalists. And like Kevin and I have said, like it's always like picking up with that person that you haven't seen, uh -huh. but automatically just starts, you know, from where you left off. And uh -huh. that so I want to tell other coaches that are listening, like seek out Michael and Kevin because they're the best podcast hosts that you guys are going to find. Oh. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Todd. Um, where can our listeners and viewers connect with you online? So uh, peoplealwaysmindset.com is my website. I'm on LinkedIn, both as Todd Sullivan um, coach, and I have people always mindset on LinkedIn. I do have Instagram and Facebook for people always mindset as well. Um, I do try to share content across the three platforms. Um, and so, and I try to post uh, a couple of, of what I hope are thought provoking or good conversation starters a couple times a week. Awesome, brother. That's fantastic. I appreciate that. We'll have all those links on the show notes page. We need to update your LinkedIn URL because that has changed. I think since the old yeah, one, I made it a little bit less lengthy. Good man. Good man. Good marketing. <laughs> I learned something. There you go. There you go. All right, Todd. Uh, thank you so much, Todd Sullivan for, for joining us on the remarkable coach. And thank you as always to our listeners and viewers. We appreciate this. Doesn't, none of this means anything without you guys. So thank you so much. And we'll see you guys next time.